Jesus could trust the Holy Spirit. And he did. Jesus staked everything that he had on the Holy Ghost. Remember that. Never forget it. The Son of the Living God staked absolutely everything. And I do not need to be sacrilegious when I word it just as I have. I mean it just as I said. When Jesus walked this earth, he was as much man as he were not God. That's the reason he could have yielded to temptation. If Jesus could not have yielded to those temptations, then those temptations would have been a farce. This is the life story of the healing evangelist, Colrin Coleman. She made a lot of impact during her time. Worthy to be called a general of God. In case you never heard of her before, don't worry, you'll know why this woman of God is considered God's general. She was born in 1907 and went to be with, with the Lord in 1976. Miss Colrin gave her life to Jesus at the age of 14 years. It was during one of the services after the preacher finished preaching, while they were singing songs of praise that the power of conviction came on her. And she started bursting in tears, as she was convicted of her sins and her need to know God. In Miss Colrin's words of before she gave her life to Jesus, she said, I was one of the most mischievous kid in town. The first time when she mounted the pulpit, was when her brother invited her to the pulpit and asked her to share about how she had encountered Christ. She didn't just talk about it, but she made everyone in that building feel like they were there during the encounter, as she made it very emotional and very dramatic. Her first sermon she preached was at the age of 21 years old. When Church of a Nazarene Church asked her to preach at the church, and she preached about Zacchaeus who was up the tree. While still in her early 20s, she organized many crusades along with her friend, Helen Gulliford who was an outstanding pianist and shared the same passion of winning souls with Miss Colrin Coleman. They bring young both of them but they organized many crusades even though they didn't even had money as of that time. Any money they had, they used it for the gospel. Emma Coleman, who was Colrin's mother, never believed or was never exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. As she was from a Methodist church. But when one she decided to visit one of the church that Colrin pastored. In that day Colrin happened to be preaching about the power of the Holy Spirit. After she finished preaching, she invited those who wanted to give their lives to Jesus and those who needs to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come to the prayer room, which was just behind the altar but to her surprise even her mother responded to the call. This is someone who was saved for many years but never believed in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. After she joined everyone who knelt down praying in the prayer room. When Colrin moved close to her, then she said, I'm here because I want to know Jesus as you know him. Then Colrin laid her hands on her. Suddenly for the first time Colrin got to hear Mama speaking in unknown tongue by the Spirit. Furthermore for the first Colrin got an embrace of love from her mother, something she had longed for for years and a love she had love felt from her mother. After she embraced her, she told her, Colrin preach it. Let others receive what I received. This for Colrin was the most encouraging words, because as of before her mother had not been fully supporting the work Colrin was doing. One of the terrible mistakes that Colrin Coleman did in ministry was falling in love with a married man who was a consistent guest speaker at a church Colrin was pastoring. After that their love grew even more together Burrow Waltrip finally divorced her wife and married Colrin Coleman. But just few months down the road Colrin realized that she had made the most terrible mistake of her life, as she began to lose the peace of God, lost many members of her church. Including Helen Gulliford who started with Colrin from her early days of ministry. The worst of all that she had to battle with every day, was battling between the will of God and her own will. Were you in a place that you want what you want but God is not in what you want? Finally at the end, it was God who won the battle. Colrin gave up trying to fight off the will of God, it was the most difficult decision for her but she was just tired of fighting that battle every day. In Miss Colrin's own words that was the most painful experience for her. This was the man she loved so dearly, a man she would willingly sacrifice herself for. 
But here she is, realizing that the man she thought to be the best thing that has ever happened to her, now we're separating ways. By this time the church Catherine was pastoring had already scattered. So mind you, she was going to start from the very beginning. Indeed some mistakes are costly. On her way while she was leaving the man she so dearly loved, she looked heavenward and repented of her evil and asked God for forgiveness and she received the assurance of salvation by faith. When she departed from that place, she made a promise to herself. That she's not going there again. Then she went to the town of Franklin, Pennsylvania, where she was invited to preach for two weeks but after she saw how she was received and how the people had a need of a pastor, she stayed there for the next four years preaching the gospel at the Franklin Tabernacle. She wasn't known in that town when she first came in, so the attendance wasn't that much, only at about 38 curious people came to see this new preacher at town. But as the days went on, more people continued to increase in number. Until the wood-beamed tabernacle was filled to capacity. In this town, God did extraordinary miracles that made even authors that wrote articles of the miracles happening at the meeting, to come to give their lives to Jesus. One extraordinary miracle which was recorded, was that of George Orr. Now George Orr was a 76 years old man, who lost his sight at industrial incident. He was on workman's compensation because a number of medical doctors declared, he would never see again with his right eye, plus his left eye had only just 15% of vision. While he was at the service, Mr. George said, it was when the woman of God made a statement, that healing was there at the meeting, just as salvation was there at the meeting. And prayed for healing, that when my eyes began to burn, until I reached home. It was when I reached home that both my eyes were completely healed. Saw as clear as before. This healing was also confirmed by the same doctor that had declared him disabled, and had filled his case to the compensation of workmen. This was one of the most spectacular miracle which was also recorded in Miss Colrin Coleman's book, called, I Believe in Miracles. This was the beginning of her healing ministry. At times people would just get healed just by being at her church. No preaching, no prayer of healing, but someone will just say, I just got healed. Just like that. In her time, Catherine was very much known for performing countless healings in her meetings. For this reason man traveled from far distances to get to her meetings. Some on wheelchairs or on stretchers. Sick people made all kinds of means available just to make sure they got to her meetings. One of the church member of Colrin Kulna, Ralph Wilkerson once said, that on a Sunday service when service was supposed to start in the afternoon but crowds of people would already be queuing at the venue by 9.30 in the morning, so much so that police had to be there for crowd control. Some of this people who came with different kinds of conditions, although many miracles and healings were happening at her meetings some would still be going back home being pushed by the wheelchair. Such things bother Catherine so much. She would be weeping helplessly after service, asking herself, why aren't they all healed? She'll be asking herself, did I perhaps not yield well to the Holy Spirit? If you saw her anguish at such things you wouldn't suspect that she's the one who was used to bring different healings to many other people. In her personality, she just wanted everything perfect. She didn't want to settle for less. Even all her staff was well trained starting choir to ushering, she told God only deserve our best. According to report from some of the witnesses that saw the miracles and healings at Catherine Coleman's meetings, he said they're too numerous even to number, we talking about thousands of testimonies of healing and miracles at her meetings. On one occasion, a five-year-old boy, crippled from birth, walked to Catherine's platform without assistance. On another, a woman, who had been crippled and confined to a wheelchair for 12 years walked to the platform without aid from her husband. However, in all this wonderful things that God did through his servant, she was still very humble. At times, she was called, a down-to-earth evangelist. Listening to Catherine Coleman's preachings, you could tell that, she was in love. Oftentimes she was heard addressing the Holy Spirit as her best friend. And she always taught that the greatest miracle, is to have your life transformed by the Holy Spirit. And made her story stand out so much as that, during her days, such kinds of things were very rare. This is why till today she remains, a general that has served her generation.